Have you ever wondered what the future of the drone industry looks like, especially in the current climate? Well, I'm meeting a man in central London who is one of the biggest connectors of drone organisations in the world. Come with me and head into London and let's find out more. So, welcome Robert. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm keen to asking you a few questions uh, about the UAS industry. And uh, the first one we'll start off with is, first of all, Mr. Robert Garbutt, who are you and what do you do? Well, thank you. I'm Chief Executive of Drone Major Group, which is a group of advisory companies. And today, obviously, we're focusing on Drone Major, which is a company that advises the entire industry on three things. Uh, it's what's the art of the possible, both now, medium term and long term. And the, the key there is what's possible now within the realms of legislation and, and technology. So it's, it's got to be a realistic sort of possibility. In the medium term, we want to know where we're going to. So it's really important that we understand what we're going to do now to get to the medium term. And then obviously long term, we've then got to make sure that we know what we've got to do in the short term and the medium term to get to the long term. And, and that's really, really important. So it's more of a sort of roadmap strategy service. The second thing is because we have the largest network of suppliers in this industry in the world, we're able to advise our clients on where to get what they need. And that doesn't just mean the product, that's the services, the expertise, the software, all of the pieces, bits and pieces in between. And lastly, if they want us to, we can help them implement that technology safely and effectively. And I think what's really important to, to, to note right now is what the term drone means. The term drone is, is, is not what people have in their mind. It's not the small spider shaped flying thing. It is actually any unmanned system that's autonomous or remotely controlled. So that means that we're advising not just on air systems, UAS, we're advising on maritime surface, submaritime systems, land-based systems, uh, space-based systems if necessary, although in that case, we're really looking at how that can support the drone industry on the ground, humanoid robotics, and everything in between, because it is a huge amount of technology that you need to be able to implement drone technology. It's not just about the drone. And that's what we do. Right, okay. Well, that's interesting because Right now, you're currently, I would say that you're one of the authorities, one of the authorities in the terms, in terms of standards, uh, both in Britain, Europe, worldwide. You know, what, what does the industry look like? Well, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I am the chairman of the British Standards Institute Committee uh, responsible for all safety and quality standards in the UK. I also sit on all the ISO committees uh, and I'm responsible personally for all the international standards regarding safety and quality for UAS operations. Uh, I've been doing that for a very long time. I'm about to pull back from the the BSI piece as a chairman, but I will retain my ISO seats and also just be the liaison between the UK. So I lead the UK and the UK lead for ISO. So, so, and I think it is a really important area and I've been very passionate about it for a very, very long time. Um, and, and I think the, the interesting thing about standards is that they enable commercialization. Not many people really understand what a standard is. Um, so if you look right from the very top, you've got law. Law requires regulation to tell you how to abide by the law. Below that, you've got a level which I call foundation standards, yeah. which is the sort of ISO 9001, 27001. But in the drone industry, it's the sort of 2134-3, which is operations, 2134-2, which is product. Uh, and there is a suite of others as well. These are the safety and quality principles by which manufacturers need to operate and by which operators need to operate so that we have a product that's safe and it's operated safely. And the real importance of these standards at that level is that it gives the industry something to use as an acceptable means of compliance. If they can comply with that standard, and in the UK, of course, we're now in the process of writing uh, the uh, certification standards for that, which is you know, a bit further down the track, but so, so you've got the foundation standards, technical standards, and certification standards. But we're now writing those standards, which will really enable industry to certify their technology or certify their operation against something that's really meaningful. So if they're operating with a large organization, if they're selling to a large organization, they can say, we comply. And that makes those organizations that are super professional, they know what they're doing, they're complying with the international standards, makes it easier for them to sell in the UK. And because they're, because they're all based on the international standards, also worldwide. And as the UK is now a global economy, we're not tied in necessarily to Europe, we can, we can stretch our legs a little bit. Uh, that will really help UK industry, UK manufacturers, which there aren't very many, yeah. but hopefully in the future there'll be more, and UK operators sell their services and their products more globally. Interesting. Yeah, because the, the industry is rapidly growing, and everybody knows this, but I mean, what, what 
as any other advice you would give to, to, to leaders and corporations currently today? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, if you look at the leaders in the drone industry, it doesn't matter whether they're developing technology or, or they're developing services. The key is commercialization. Yeah. Uh, there are many companies developing technology that may, and, and in fact, carrying out huge trials of R&D and taking money from the government to do that, using taxpayers' money to do that, that will never actually be used because they're not actually needed because there, there isn't clients at the end. Yeah. So the key is that for any companies, look at where the client is and what the client needs. Uh, and that's, that brings in the Phoenix program, which is the largest commercialization program in the world, the third company in the group. Um, it's really, really important that you have that marketplace to sell to, know what they want and have a marketplace to, to, to operate in. Uh, because simply producing a product is not good enough. You know, I mean, the, the, the old adage of build it and they will come is not true. You think about certification of aircraft, and this is, I'll bring in the eVTOL industry, which I always find fascinating. Um, passenger carrying eVTOLs, when the industry first started, yeah. everyone was convinced that these sexy looking machines would be carrying people around the world with no pilot on board. Wrong. Okay, and we know that because if you're in aviation, you know that no aviation authority is going to give you authority to do that. Yeah. Um, but, but people still did it, and they took lots of money from investors to do it. Now they're starting to come around. There's fewer companies now for that reason. Uh, but they're now thinking, okay, so we've got to certify this aircraft. Oh, my God, look at the cost of doing that. And there's huge problems in, in, in doing that because, you, you, you know, a cost of, you know, a, a, a sort of passenger carrying jet will last for 40 years, where an eVTOL might only last for five. And if you've got to spend 500 million certifying it, how are you going to get your money back? So there's no commonality which is what brings us back to standards. This is why standards are so important. Companies can come in now and start building infrastructure yeah. technology that will enable the industry. Companies have got to really start thinking about, you know, how do I commercialize? Yes. It's not just about how can I spend an investor's money or how can I spend government money doing R&D? It's got to be, how do I commercialize? And if they don't realize that, then their lifespan is going to be quite limited. And we know the hundreds of millions of pounds millions. That, that have been spent of government money all on companies that have gone bust, okay, yeah. or, or have dissolved. Yeah. So, so for drone companies, that's my advice. Really think about the wide escape. Uh, you, you've really got to start working together with other suppliers to do that because no one supplier can deliver, you know, if you design a, a, an air system or a maritime system, that is not the only thing. And don't start diversifying, creating your own little ecosystem because it's already there. So partner up. And this is one thing we do at Drone Majors. We, we encourage suppliers to work together in consortiums to deliver capability to governments, to organizations and to, to defense, or defense organizations, Ministry of Defense, you know, DOD in, in the US. That's what it's for. Come and collaborate, okay? Because if you start bloating your company, to try to sell your own product, you're really going down the wrong route and you're spending a huge amount of money or the huge amount of taxpayers' money developing things that somebody else has already developed. And that's not a really good market. So that's my advice for the sort of drone industry, as it were. I think on the client side, the advice has got to be seek independent advice and guidance, the lifespan of that technology and when are you gonna to have to upgrade it? And all of a sudden, the, the savings that you might make on replacing a, a human guard yes. with a digital guard uh, may be completely wiped out over five years because you've got to buy it five times. Yeah. And if you think about commercialization, it's not the ability for a man with a drone to go and e more easily just go and fly it. It's the ability of industry to use this technology unfettered so that it's become something that can feed into society. So, yeah, the, you know, it, it is a very complex um, uh, proposition. And you've, you've really got to, you've got to understand where it's coming from. So to go back to your question in terms of which country, so you've got countries like Japan yeah. that are doing really fantastic work on detect and avoid, DAA. Uh, and they've got, you know, laboratories set up specifically to test that. They've got great technology and software. So they are, I would say that Japanese are leading in that area at the moment. Yeah. The Americans are doing a lot of trials, a lot of trials on deliveries. I mean, it's a thing that I hate. Really, so delivering delivering groceries and packages using small drones is, as you know, I've I've, I've spoken about this many times. It's neither it's neither uh, commercially viable in big numbers because of the certification requirements aren't there for the small drones. So yep. the amount of drones that you'd need to service a city would be absolutely massive. Uh, and and then of course you don't know what the mean time to failure is on that. And is it going to fail in the air? And is it going to fall out? Even if it's got a parachute. May it land on someone or someone's car and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's really not commercially viable. Secondly, it's not really safe because you, you know even if you do certify it, 
um, which is even if you reach the certification level of a helicopter, which is 10 to the minus nine, as you know, yes. um, the problem is, is that the am amount of helicopters that you see flying around a city, you might see one, you might see two, but the, um, you'd need thousands of drones to service a city to yes. deliver pizzas and, yes. and, and espressos. And, and the, never mind all the infrastructure that you'd need in people's gardens and who's going to pay for that? Well, they're not going to do it. So is Amazon going to pay for that or is someone else going to pay for that? Who knows? So not commercially viable, not really safe. And the most important piece is it's not socially acceptable. People do not want to see thousands of little drones flying around delivering bottles of beer and, you know, the rubber gloves to the guy next door because they've all got cameras on it. You know, you're all you're all you're all getting filmed, whether you like it or not. Someone's got the data. People don't want it. But if you can get a large drone, air drone now I'm talking about, that can lift 500 kilograms and that can fly from, let's say, Orpington to Rotherhive. Yeah. OK, and they can do it in nine minutes where it takes a, a, a white van 90 minutes up to 90 minutes. So you can do that 10 times. So you can if, essentially for one journey, you can take the equivalent of, you know, for, for in 90 minutes, 10 white vans off the road, which eases the congestion on our roads. It means that people can get to work easier. If you're if you're hiring a service of somebody who has drones, you want to know that their drones are compliant with the international standards or with the certification standards that, you, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're developing here in the UK. Without standards, the industry wasn't going to be able to commercialize. But there are many different other bits that we need to do. Hence, I created the Drone Delivery Group, which is a, a method. Uh, it's an organization that enables industry to have its voice to tell government how to deal with and what it needs from government with regards to key um, uh, key issues. So all of these things I've had to do yeah. <laughs> along the way um, when really, you know, when I first started, it was more of a marketing model and a, a connecting stakeholders together. And it's evolved into something far bigger. It's taken a hell of a long time for yeah. us to get it to a point where it's really kicking off. Yeah. But but it's been a, it's been a fascinating journey. Yeah. So I've learned a hell of a lot. Yeah. It sounded like you do you, know, you have learned a lot. And, and actually, the industry could learn something um, from, from this next question, because because the next question really is, is, you know, if I was a company, a manufacturer, uh, someone who's providing a service, you know, how could the Drone Major help me? Well, so Drone Major is really there to support two, two elements. One is our suppliers. Uh, and in supporting our suppliers, firstly, come on board, join, join the network, get the connectivity, get the advice that you need. Uh, there is also now a certification process. So we can, so we can actually go through uh, a process which we're aiming to strengthen our suppliers. So looking at, you know, are you compliant? Do, do, you know, right down to, are you, do you have cyber essentials? Would you like some help doing that? Uh, do, you know, do you have the right business? Do you have a business plan? Do you have the right business structure? Are you resilient? Are you, so we're trying to build stronger suppliers. Now it's up to our suppliers whether they take that, go down that journey, but it is now available for them. So it's not just a network that we, where we can interconnect and that's very valuable because many companies that exist don't know who else is out there. Correct. And because of the size of the network we've got, which is you know in, in the thousands, as you say, it is very, very large, uh, we are able to say, I know a company that you definitely need to speak to and we can introduce them. Yeah. There's no cost for that. So you know, it's, it's a really low cost way of engaging with the entire global drone industry. Yes. But it's also a way, if you want it to be, to strengthen your company. Um, and of course, at the other end of it, which is the most important for most companies when they first join, is it, it gives them opportunities. So when we have an opportunity, be it from the De Department for Defense or, or, the, or the MOD or from government or from a commercial organization, whatever it is, we go to our suppliers first. We look at what they can do. We in introduce them to the opportunity and they have then an option of putting themselves down for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's not a tendering process. We, we write what's called supplier intelligence reports for our clients for free. Yes. So, so long as they've got a budget and so long as they've got a timeline, we will go to the market, to our suppliers, yeah. find out the best companies to deliver what that client needs, put it into a report and give it to that client free of charge. It sounds extremely helpful. Yeah. It's designed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connectivity, networking. Yeah, brilliant. So what would you say then uh, is next uh, for the company? Do you have any future plans? Well, I think at the end of the day, Drone Major as a company is a, uh, it, it is a consultant, so it's an advisory service, but it is there as an enabler for the rest of the group, essentially. So Drone Major will carry on, it'll carry on advising companies, it will carry on supporting suppliers. The future of the company is really in the Phoenix program, in expanding that. So each Phoenix project is an SPV, it's a company. We build a team, first of all, we get understand what the clients need. We get their buy into it. 
uh, and they get skin in, they have skin in the game. We open the SPV for investment. We fund that project and that company goes off on its own merry way to become a company in the future, delivering a service, utilizing the suppliers that we have. And I intend to develop more and more and more of these companies. Currently we have seven active projects. Uh, we're looking at also creating a fund at Phoenix Major Limited level, which is the top co for the Phoenix group, yeah. uh, which is a group within the drone major group. Uh, and that will fund seed fund the, the programs in the future. It's because the hardest thing is obviously getting it off the ground, getting that roadmap done, getting the business plan done, because it all costs, costs money. Yes. So that is the future, I think, is, is, is more towards the commercialization uh, program that we have. And of course, there are three models there. There's a, there's a franchise type model such as Phoenix Carbon, yes. where we will, we, we're setting up the company and then Drone Major will be going out looking for drone operators to bring into the franchise to provide them with the equipment and the training. And of course, all of the strengthening uh, elements that I spoke about earlier to make them a strong company, and they can deliver that service to the clients that we, we have got. Um, there is the uh, um, uh, the uh, commercialization model, which is supporting programs uh, in the future, such as you know the Ocean uh, Ocean uh, Futures program, where they've got lots of R and D going on. Really? You know, lots and lots of R and D, twenty six billion pounds worth of R and D, no commercialization, no no idea where the, the things that drop out of this program. It's just endless money pouring into an R and D program. So where where's it going to go? So we're we're working, going to be working very closely, hopefully, with them wow. to commercialize the output of those programs. Also working with the ALTA program, that's the Offshore Low Touch Energy Robotics and Autonomous Systems yeah. program, looking at, again, what's the roadmap for that? What does industry need? Uh, and there are, there are a whole myriad of, yeah. of programs on that. So, so the future of the group is really about Phoenix, Phoenix Major. Mm -hmm. We're also, Innovation Major is a different organization. It's, it's more of an incubator for brands. Yeah. So in, in there at the moment, we have Software Major, Cyber Major, and Design Major, all of which are developing their brands. They will eventually come out as, as, as spin-offs Yes. and be and, and be off into the market wow that's incredibly helpful yeah very informative and uh, i just want to say thank you very much for that my pleasure it was really useful and i uh, i hope that everybody else um, has found that really useful um so i mean really uh, thanks for watching this video on the importance uh, of drone major in the industry and as as drones become more prevalent you know it's crucial to ensure that they use safely and in compliance uh, with iso to help mitigate risks and to ensure safe operations uh, thank you very much, Robert. My pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.